Hey guys, this is Amerison here. I'm here to do a quick tutorial on setting your graphics within Arma 2 to get the best out of your gameplay, whether it be DayZ or any kind of the uh, mission files that are out there like Wasteland. So what you're going to do is go into Options, Video Options. Inside here, these are kind of like the default presets. Um, you want to kind of make sure that a, that the interface resolution and the 3D resolution match whatever your monitor can handle. If the 3D resolution is lower than your monitor, it can look kind of muddy and not really look clear, um, as well as just not being a good experience. The visibility, if you watch, um, once I get a scene here that actually shows the distance, which I think this is good. So, over here you kind of see like a fog of war in these trees. If I increase this, you see the fog of war continues to grow further out and I can see farther away from myself, up into the mountains and the trees. So basically you want to set this as high as you think your graphics card can handle. Some mods and mission files, like Wasteland, have internally set distances that you cannot see past. So even though you might have this set to 10,000, you might not be able to see to 10,000. Uh, you might be able to only see as far as the mod creator has allowed you to, um, depending on if you're playing single player or a mod or something online. So then you're going to go ahead and click the advance button. And inside of here, um, I'm going to go over each one of these um, and kind of talk to each one and their points. There's a couple of critical ones in there that you really have to worry about more than anything else. So. First you have texture detail, which, which is pretty self-explanatory, all the different textures within the games, the, the textures that make up the grass, the buildings, the, the vehicles, etc. Um, I like to put that as high as my graphics card can handle because then everything looks nice within the game. Um, you can also set it down a little bit if you don't have a lot of memory within your video card that can handle it and it kind of will slow it down because it has to swap um, the graphics in and out of the, the graphics card itself. Video memory. This one's a really tricky one. This is the kind of the one of the gotcha ones. If you have a video card that's 256 megabytes of physical memory or lower, you want to set it to normal, low, or very low. If you have a video card that is higher than 256 megabytes, you want to set it for very high or default. Um, you want to set it to default if you have a card that's significantly higher than 512 or an unusual size of, of memory like, I don't know, 1.2 gigs, whatever the case may be. So if you have a, a graphics card that's kind of um, um, recent or a new graphics card, most of the new ones come with at least one gig, um, some two and some up to four, and even the latest one, the Titan from NVIDIA comes with uh, six. So what you're going to want to do is set it to default. You might want to set it to very high, but you'll actually get very bad performance because it locks your physical memory usage of your graphics card to 512. I'm not sure why. That's just the way this engine was built. It was built quite a long time ago, so some of these things don't make sense for current today's hardware. Anisotropic filtering um, basically deals with how textures blend together and with each other at a distance. Uh, my understanding is that wherever the road kind of meets uh, um, the grass or a 3D object kind of melds in with another 3D object, the better anisotropic filtering will keep the blending of those two together better. So I, I've set this both high and low and not seen any kind of difference with my frame rate. So I would, I would suggest setting that to as high as possible. Anti-aliasing is one of the ones that really takes a hit on your graphics card and its frame rates and how it can handle the frame rates. So I would suggest to set that depending on your graphics card. The lower setting you'll get better uh, frame rates. ATOC. This is one that's kind of strange in that the ATOC controls the anti-aliasing on the foliage, be it trees. Um, if you open this up you'll see that there are trees, Armor 2 trees, arrowhead trees, and the grass. And so basically you can put anti what your anti-aliasing setting will be applied to these various objects as well as the 3D objects in the world. But here you have control over the trees and the grass in particular. Um, in this particular case, doing the grass as well as the trees causes quite a bit of lag and can slow your computer down depending on your, your graphics card, of course. So generally what's suggested is you put all trees and then in PPA over here, because I'm going to talk about that jump over here because it kind of melds with ATOC, 
Um, you can put this to low, normal, or high if you like a blended grass. And you can see, like, go into the game and try this. Or you can go to a sharp filter and the grass is very crisp. Um, so this is kind of a low-end anti-aliasing on the grass and is better on your frame rates. So I would suggest if, you're, uh, if you have a very low-end graphics card to have this disabled, this disabled, and um, anti-aliasing as low as possible, if not off. Uh, the game, game won't look all that great, but it will run pretty good with your frame rates. And, and trust me, having frame rates is better than having the grass look good. And in fact, I've noticed that the anti-aliasing, when you turn it off, um, especially for the trees, you can actually see better between the trees because it doesn't blend the, um, the leaves together and make it kind of um, more bushy. So it actually gives you an advantage to have that off, although it doesn't look all that great. Then you have terrain detail, which basically at distances, whether or not the mountain s slopes nicely or has a little bit of a jagged edge to it. Um, object details are essentially the closer you get to the object, the better it'll look, unless you have it to very high and then um, very far out. It'll still look decent, but it takes a hit on your graphics card. So this is another one of those ones that you can kind of lower to, to get the frame rate better. Um, then you've got shadow detail. I like to have this very high because when somebody's coming around the corner or there's a bad guy um, to where the light would shine and I might see his shadow but not see him, it's a real advantage to see that shadow. Um, or if somebody's in a, um, a vehicle parked behind a building but you can't see the vehicle, you can't see them, but you can see their shadow of the vehicle, um, it gives you a little bit of an edge. HDR quality, you want to always have it very high because when it's a dark server, like at night, you can turn the gamma up and the brightness up and it'll kind of be like a sepia tone movie. Um, you'll almost be able to see at a very dark night. But with your HDR quality, if you set it to normal or high, it doesn't look as good at night. You want to have the post-process effects disabled. Um, I've noticed that post-process effects kind of blurs the world a little bit and does the motion blur when you look left and right and really affects both your FPS as well as the um, I guess the immersion of the game. I don't like having it on uh, even though it doesn't hit my graphics card that bad. Um, you can try it on and off depending on your, on your tastes. Interface size, I like it normal. Um, you can actually make it larger uh, or smaller depending on if you have trouble seeing some of the uh, font sizes and stuff. Aspect ratio, you leave that default or whatever it was because that's going to be whatever your monitor is. Mine's 16 by 10. If it doesn't choose the right one, obviously you want to you want to change that to the one that you want. And then VSync, um, you want to keep it enabled. So basically, the the two settings in particular that are very critical to ensuring that you have a good experience with an Arma 2 is video memory should be default if you're anything over 512 megabytes of RAM on your video card, which if you have anything that you've bought within the last two years, it's got at least one gig on it. And then you have post-processing effects should be disabled because it gives you the best uh, the best settings possible or the best um, frame rates possible, as well as I think it just looks better that way. Most of the other settings, I would say, you know, I've gone over them, but play with them and kind of turn them down until your frame rate becomes something that's ni nice and, and usable. You want at least 25 frames per second looking around at normal things because when you get in a firefight and there's some explosions it's going to drop a, a few frames per second to just kind of render all that stuff happening and that's when you really want the extra frames per second so some guy doesn't sneak up and shoot you. I hope this uh, tutorial has helped anybody or, um, or anything. Leave me a comment, uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, or ask a question either directly to me or as a comment on the uh, video and I'll be happy to answer you. Have a good one. Thanks.